Hello, today I wanted to talk about um, an article that I read on Chess Reddit about um, relating to a video. And this was a podcast that Daniel Jubov uh, filmed uh, for Must Reader. Uh, so, uh, effectively, he was interviewed for over 40 minutes. I think they played a blitz game at the end. Uh, I think Must Reader, Greg Must Reader, that's not his real name, I believe he's uh, Russian originally. Um, or from that sort of like Eastern Europe. And he good friends with Dubov and they, they sat down and they talked. And at one point, uh, Dubov made an interesting observation. He said that Caruana is possibly the least talented player in the top 20 and top 30. And he said it's not meant to be an insult, but it's meant to really be a compliment because he's made the best use of what he has effectively is what he was saying I think you could perceive it as something of an insult if I was Caruana uh, Caruana did a did a rebuttal in, uh, sort of uh, without you know obviously pour, pouring scorn on Jubob's uh, remarks obviously he would perceive Jubob as a rival don't want to create beef uh, so what I would say about that is I think uh, what uh, I mean uh, firstly I would say that uh, I thought the podcast was really good I mean, it already seems like it's probably the best podcast. Uh, what Jubov said, not just at that point, but in the whole interview, was very interesting, very perceptive, in my opinion. Um, he also talked about the amount of hours you have to spend to obviously be a good player, what you need to work on, all that kind of thing. So he talked about how uh, you know 90% of the work was actually on the openings. So a lot of amateur players say, you know, you don't work on them. You don't need to work on openings, or a lot of people give that advice. Uh, so he's contradicting that. But also, I thought he contradicted himself in the interview, in, in a sense, because at first he said, um, you know, what do you need to do to reach the level of Magnus? He said, well, you know, I understand like maybe ten positions really well. Uh, whereas Magnus, he understands so many different, more, so many more positions well than I, than I do, uh, which makes sense right I mean certainly in relation to me Jubal would understand far more positions than I do so it's, it just goes on a scaling uh, ladder however he then sort of suggests uh, the reason why Magnus knows so many positions well is obviously you know it's not by chance he's obviously done a lot of work which he obviously has so I think a lot of this is is you know but then later on obviously he says that Caruana can't possibly be be um compared talent-wise to Magnus. So I think a lot of this relates to the myth of Magnus. I think Magnus has built up this myth of being this uber-talented player. Don't get me wrong, I think he is. But I also think he's also done a huge amount of work on chess. How does he know so many end games? How does he know so many games in the past? Because he's looked at them. You know, it's not by chance. He's obviously spent many hours, uh, many thousands of hours studying chess. Uh, I think he works pretty hard when he's committed to chess. And part of the reason he pulled away from the World Championships is because he doesn't like working on that, you know, doing that 90% study time on the opening theory. Uh, he doesn't need to. He's already proved himself. So, phenomenally talented player, but uh, in my opinion, uh, Caruana is a naturally gifted chess player. You know, he was very good as a junior. You can't suddenly become exceptional as a junior and then later on in your career because you worked hard and you did all that to become a top top player you then regard as untalented because you did so much work I mean I do think with Caruana he knows a lot of opening theory um, you know I, that I would agree with he clearly has worked hard on chess uh, in the past but that's true of all the top players I mean if you look at let's look at the live rating list and which players oh sorry something happened there which players could he be compared to i mean who are the talented players in that list so magnus is obviously a very naturally gifted player but as i said before i think there's a bit of a myth around magnus i think he has worked hard on chess as well i mean don't get me wrong if magnus didn't look at a chessboard for five years came back he'd still you know, he'd still crush me, he'd still crush most players, 99.9% .9 of players. Um, but because he's so phenomenally strong, he's just better than other people. We're having this debate the other day and somebody said, well, Nakamura's got a bad record. And it's because he gets psyched out by Magnus. 
Um, I don't agree. I think Magnus is just a better positional player than Nakamura. He's better. He's better at exploiting Nakamura's mistakes because he's so accurate than possibly other players have been in the past. So Caruana and then Gukesh is clearly a very talented player, but also works very hard. Uh, Arjun. So during that podcast, Jubov suggested that Arjun is doing ten hours a day. So that might be a key to why he is uh, getting to the level he is. Obviously, Gukesh is also working hard. All these players work hard on chess. I think Faruja went through a period where he wasn't doing that much. He would be one of the players you would say is probably the most naturally, one of the most naturally gifted players. Magnus Carlsen is always going on about Faruja, how much he rates him. He talked about how when Faruja was brought onto his team, that Faruja was playing blitz games while they were studying uh, positions, and he was he was playing two blitz games at the same time. So he was very sort of hyperactive. Yi Wei was very good as a junior. Nepomniachtchi kind of yeah, he's kind of in the middle. I would say Wesley's so very naturally gifted player. Anand obviously you would say probably one of the most naturally gifted players of all time. Um, Pragananda. Dominguez, I would say, would I would put more in the workhorse category. I don't get me wrong, he's obviously a very strong player, but I mean, if you put Caruana in that category, certainly I'd put Dominguez in that category. It always seems to get a good position out of the opening. Someone else I would say is a workhorse would probably, because a lot of American players actually, Shankland, who's alluded to that himself in the past, is someone who works very hard. Uh, going further down the list, uh, Liam, talented. I mean, anyone who comes from Vietnam, which doesn't have a great chess history, and has done that well. It's clearly got a lot of natural ability. Duda, very good tactically. Levon Aronian, probably, you know, one of the most naturally gifted players there is. Maxime Vachelagrave, very talented player, very good at blitz. I mean, good at, being good at blitz is a clear indication, in my opinion, that you're... Not everyone would agree with this, but I would say that that is a clear indication that you're very good, a very naturally gifted player. Um... Yeah, and obviously Ding going further down is a phenomenal talent. Um, but um, I mean, one thing I would say, we were talking about the work ethic. And, you know, in recent times, Aronian and Vatcher de Grave have tumbled down the rating list a little bit compared to where they were. I mean, Aronian was over 2,800. I think Vatcher de Grave has been over 2,800 briefly. So a lot of achievement is linked to hard work and how, mu how much motivation you have at that period in, in your life. Now, probably Aronian and Maxim bachelor Grab were at some point working very hard, maybe six to seven hours a day. Who knows? I don't know. But at some point, maybe the motivation went down a little bit and just a little bit. At that level, it, you know, it counts for a lot. So you slip in and maybe you're not working as, as hard. Talking about my own story, uh, if you go back to 2018, 2019, I was kind of in a bit of a funk. And I remember I didn't have very good Hastings. I wasn't working very hard on my chess, I don't think. And certainly before that, I went for a long period where I was over-reliant on the, on the chess engine and I wasn't really using engaging my brain. So anytime I got stuck on the position or I'd analyse the game later with an engine. So it was never really my own input. And after that, I started doing a bit more work on chess. Clearly not in the constructive way that Juba would have done it. But I think over the last two or three years, I have seen better results. I mean, I'm not getting to the level I want to get to, which is, you know, up there with the top players, because obviously that's what you should be striving for. Why are you bothering otherwise? Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting what Jubov said. He said, you know, if, if they're doing like 10 hours a day, there's pointless me doing four hours a day because over the long term, I'm dead. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. I think if you're doing constructive work every day, it's better to, you know, it's better to do that consistently over, say, two or three years than, say, do seven or eight hours and then get burnt out and not be able to do it over a long period. So you can't really compare yourself with others. Um, but there is a sort of a sense um, in a chess world. I know I've had a lot of conversations with people, you know, related to British chess, where we talked about which players are talented, which players do we perceive as being workhorses. I mean, one player who's always had a reputation for working hard has been Matthew Sadler. 
Um, so he was often dismissed as a bit of a workhorse, talentless workhorse. That's one of the kind of, <laughs> you know, it's a little bit like that boxer from Animal Farm, right? But the, the reality is that Mag, um, Matthew Sadler was very good as a junior. Uh, yes, he worked hard. I think he worked, you know, he worked very hard at Olympia. That's why he did well at Olympia because he prepared very hard before the games and after the games, and um, you know, be fully, fully into it during that period. So he, he did very well when he played for England, and he did very well overall in his chess career. But he worked hard. But then you also have to think about someone like Michael Adams, is perceived as being this natural, talented player, which he is. But he also had periods where he worked very hard as well. So, and I'm sure that's still ongoing. Um, Nigel Short, when he was younger, was spending you know many hours uh, from a, quite a young age. That's why he got very good results when he was younger. So, you know, I think the reality is that most of it's hard work. And all these players, yes, they're naturally gifted, but not a single one of them has not spent at some point in their life. Maybe they're not working that hard now, but at some point in their life. They were working very, very hard on chess. They were obsessional about chess. You couldn't get to that level without that kind of commitment. So that is what I would say. I also think the ability to assimilate information quickly is very relevant. Uh, Magnus Carlsen was talking about how he knows so many different positions and he's so flexible. So if he gets stuck in a position, he's going to have some idea what to do about it. Whereas it's interesting with someone like Jubov. Seems, is Jubov actually currently over 2,700? So on a live list, Jubov is not actually over 2700, which is interesting. So it'd be interesting to see if this new work ethic pays off. But again, he's probably playing against a lot of players that are younger than he is, even younger than he is, quite a young guy, a bit of a Karpov lookalike, looks a little bit like young Karpov. Um, and they're super, motiva super motivated as well. They're doing many hours on chess. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's an interesting debate, the whole talent debate. So I've lost my train of thought there, as usual. Clearly, I'm not very talented at keeping my train of thought. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, sorry, yeah, going back to the Magnus thing, he obviously, is, you know, did a lot of work on chess. He knows a lot of positions. Well, Jubov said that basically he does not, you know, there's a lot of positions where he'll get stuck. And... Um, you know, he, he won't know he won't know what to do as well as he will do in other positions, which is natural. I'm sure that's true for Magnus as well to some extent, but he's more flexible. He knows a lot of positions. You know, study openings in, in lines that you don't won't necessarily play because that will have some bearing on your overall understanding of chess. So those are my thoughts uh, as related to this issue about talent. I think it's slightly overblown because I think the Clearly, the the main thing about being a top player, top chess player, is you have to work hard. I mean, if you look at other sports, it's interesting in, in English chess, actually, that I think there's a lot of, I mentioned this before, there's a lot of weaker GMs who do very little work on chess. A lot of the people that I've socialised with in the past are quite lazy. And... Um, But, you know, when you're at the British Championships, uh, you know, a few of us might go out for a few drinks and that might sort of like escalate. Whereas if you look at the, the guys who end up winning, people like Michael Adams, David Howe, um, and so on, you don't really see them out socialising during the tournament. They might come out for a drink at the end of the tournament, but you don't really see them during the tournament because... Uh, you know they're, they're they're very committed to the chess. They're studying the chess. They're really they're really super motivated. These people. They're very competitive people. And when uh, Jubov talks about Caruana, he says he's made the most of his abilities. You know, psych psychologically strong and all that kind of stuff. It is a compliment, but you'd also say that about Magnus as well. He's also psychologically strong. He's also very competitive. He's very sort of stable. So, yeah, I mean. I, it's it's hard to I mean who who would say is like a like a like a somebody who's a lost talent maybe maybe Ferugia in a way in the sense that he's not over twenty eight hundred yet uh, whereas Caruana is and you would say that yes probably Ferugia is more naturally gifted than, than Caruana but he's also younger so therefore and there's not much in it in terms of natural talent 
So therefore, because he's younger, he's got more time to make up the difference. But anyway, those are my thoughts about the natural talent debate. Um, please leave your comments down below. I think this is a very interesting debate, actually. And I'm, I'm going to be writing a book at the moment. So I'm probably going to be mentioning that in the book and talking about the whole sort of natural talent debate and what do people think about. I like to think that I'm quite naturally talented at chess. Not compared to these guys, but... Um, but yeah, when I was a kid, my dad taught me and my sister chess. Uh, got our chess board. This is when we were living in London, South East, uh, South East London, Lewisham. Got our board. My sister's two years older than me, but she never really carried on playing chess. I didn't carry on playing chess for several years after that. But I remember picking it up straight away. And most things I don't pick up straight away, like I did judo when I was a kid and I failed miserably. You know, there's lots of things where I, I sort of like struggled with, but chess w wasn't one of them. So that was already a sign that I had some kind of aptitude for playing chess, I think. Um, but it's not enough to be talented. You know, if you look at, actually, if you look at someone like David Howe, I mean, he is somebody who does try very hard. He, he puts a lot of effort in, uh, and he doesn't leave anything out there. But he was also a talented junior as well. He was good as a junior player. And he's made the most of his talents. It doesn't matter if you're talented. It's not easy to get to number one in the country at what you do. You know, there's no... There's, I mean, there's lots of juniors around now who are very naturally talented and they would like to have that position. People like Shreyas Raw, Bod Hanna, um, Super Tip Banerjee, the kid I played at the weekend, Louis Cheng, Ethan Pang. They would like to have that position of being number one in the country. That's partly why they're motivated and striving to be better at chess. Uh, but it's not easy to do it. So, yeah, you can have all these abilities, but, you know, it's you have to combine everything. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, I've probably been babbling on too long as usual. But, uh, please leave your comments down below. What do you think is um, the, uh, yeah, the whole debate? What do you think What do you think about the debate? Do you think G-Bob went a little bit too far? Or do you think, I think he made interesting points. So I'm glad, that, you know, people, people sort of bring up this debate because I think it's a worthwhile debate to have.